how to set up Google ad conversion tracking inside your Google ad account. That's what I'm going to be walking you through in this particular video. And in this video, I'm going to show you kind of two different ways. One, if you use the global site tag as your form of tracking, or the second method is if you use Google Tag Manager. Google have recently changed this. So this is new content that's been updated to reflect this latest change. So let's go dive into an account and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Google are always making updates. So at the time of this recording, it has changed um, a little bit. So how did I get to this? So before I explain how I got here, essentially what we're doing is we'll be sending traffic to this particular page. So I don't put conversion tracking on my landing page. I'm going to put conversion tracking code on what's called my thank you page, the success page when somebody has signed up. And if I show my tag assistant here, you can see I've already got conversion tracking code on here. If I go to the landing page, you'll see that I do not have conversion tracking code. Okay, but I'll got, walk you through the process by which to do this. And so therefore, you know, for the month of January, we can see that I had five sales um, and that's due to me having put that conversion tracking code on this thank you page. Okay, so to get to your conversion tracking section, tools and settings and then conversions, and then you should land on a screen that looks a little bit like this. If um, I can change the view a little bit so that it looks like this, but really they're, they're much of the same thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go plus new and there's four different types of conversions that we can track. So we can track website conversions, which is an action on your website, which is obviously what this is. There's an action, someone buying as they're buying online is an action on my website. You can track actions on your app. Obviously, we're not going to be doing that in this one. Uh, phone calls, and we can also import conversion tracking goals or our goals from analytics into Google Ads, and it will just pick up that goal that way. Okay, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be showing you this one of how to track conversions from your website. So if I click this, uh, this is somewhat new at the time of this recording, it might not be new anymore. Google are always testing new things, and Google's asking us to put in our website domain to search for the global site tag. The global site tag is, is this global site tag. If you don't have the global site tag on your website, be it, be it you used Google Tag Manager, then don't worry, you can also still do it, but it just might look a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in HTTPS w.teachtraffic.com. We're going to scan. It's going to scan our website. So because I have the global site tag on my website, it's given me this option. If you don't have the global site tag, then you will only get this particular option. Okay. Obviously, I'm going to show you both. Okay. So if you do have the global site tag, it's basically asking you to um, add a page load as a conversion action. So we're going to select a category. So we'll just say purchase. Okay. URL uh, contains, and we can get our thank you page, and we say retargeting dash thank you. And we can click add. Okay, and then we can go to the settings, and we can change some of these settings if we'd like to. So I can say, call it oh, challenge purchase, okay. The URL contains that. Obviously, there's a difference between URL is, contains, and starts with. So is means it's got to be exactly that. I My personal preference is contains because sometimes some browsers can tack on a, a slash at the end and sometimes doesn't. I don't know. I don't know why it does that. So I personally like contains. Or you could also use starts with. Really, this depends on the URL structure of your website. So you need to think about the differences between that. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the same value for each conversion. Conversion. I'm going to give it a value of $10. You don't have to assign a value for it, or you could just even assign a value of $1 to it. It depends what it is that you are tracking. Uh, the count is so, um, 
this is if you want to if for, for example somebody lands on my thank you page twice do I want to count that as two conversions or do I want it to Google to only count it once so I'm personally just going to choose one but you might find uh, you want to count every instance once again it's really comes down to what you want to track okay uh, but that's sort of the difference between it and obviously they've got explanations here as well Okay, the click-through conversion window, I'm going to leave that to be 30 days. I think 90 days is a bit much. View through conversions one day, that's cool. Attribution model, I'm going to do it as actually uh, time decay, which means that as long as they clicked on an ad at some point, then I'm happy for Google to take credit for it because I do believe that you know it has contributed. So... Um, that's why I've done time decay. But yeah, the different attribution models uh, really depends on, as I said, as it says here, how much credit each ad interaction get ad interaction gets for your conversion. So if you want only last click, that means that um, Google has the Google ad has to be the last click before somebody does what you want them to do in order for a conversion to be counted. If you're doing advertising on multiple different platforms, be it, you know, maybe Facebook ad and then retargeting on Google, for example, then you might find you want to, you know, do time decay. Often we do time decay, actually, because that gives credit to a touch point throughout the conversion journey. OK, and then we click done. And then we're going to need to get the tag. Oh, I've got to give the whole URL. Oopsie, I stuffed it up. Cool. And click done. And then we click then we click save and continue. And here we can see um Oh, it's just saying the problem by global side tag. That's fine. Um, cool. And then we can basically add this code to the thank you page of my website. Okay, so I can copy that or just download it. You can also email the instruction to your webmaster if you like, but this is really the code that you're going to put on that page. Okay, so I want to show you if you're using Tag Manager, how you're going to do it. So this is my challenge purchase that I just created. If you... Um, so if I go into this conversion action, what I can do is this has gone into the settings that we've just created, tag setup, and I can, um, as I said, get those those tags uh, if I need it. Okay, so let's go back to doing what I did before. Some reason it's glitchy. Cool. We're gonna give our Cool. To scan again, scroll down here and add a conversion action manually. Okay, same thing, same process, purchase, challenge, I'll just give it a different name, <laughs> same value, I'm going to give it $10. Okay, I'm going to count once, view through it for 30 days, engage, that should be fine. Attribution model, I will set it to be time decay. Uh, that's fine. Click done. Okay. And then if we go into the settings, that looks good. Just to double check. Okay. Save and continue. And we click done. And then what we can do here, challenge by, that's the one that we just created. Tag setup. And then we can use Google Tag Manager here. And this is the conversion ID and the conversion label that you add to Tag Manager. And obviously you can refer to our Tag Manager course on how to in um, how to upload your conversion tracking code using Tag Manager. And yeah, that's where you find that information. There it is everyone. That's how easy it is to set up conversion tracking in your account. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button so that um, other people can enjoy this video as well. Thanks for watching.